Howdy music fans, thanks for joining me today on my year-end music review for 2020. This is my first time ever doing this on video. I usually just post a list on Facebook, and since I'm doing this, um, these videos now, I'm doing this on video. Uh, I'd like to start off by saying, wow, 2020 has been one hell of a year, and um, it's been really, really, really pretty rotten. Um, I want to say rest in peace to some of my musical heroes, John Prine, Billy Joe Shaver, Toots Hibbert of Toots and the Maytals, and many more. And my heart goes out to all the people that have been affected by COVID, by unemployment, by racial injustice, by everything awful that's been happening this year, and by quarantine, by so many things. That's the bad news. Um, the good news is it's been a hell of a year for music as well. So let's uh, jump right into that. I'm going to start with things I did not buy. Okay, first off, uh, John Fogarty. Fogarty's Factory is John Fogarty playing his older Creedon songs with his family. It's gotten some mixed reviews on places like Amazon. Um, I may give it a listen so at some point. I don't know. Neil Young, Return to Greendale, live CD and DVD of Greendale. I did like Greendale a lot, so I may eventually pick this up, but I don't know anything about it at this point. Neil Young, The Times. This is an acoustic uh, take on uh, se several of his older songs, one new one and one cover, The Times They Are Changing. And um, it's pretty raw. It sounds like it's him in his living room, and it's um, it's it sounds kind of cool. It's got the campaigner, and it's got... Um, I forget another one, a leader of the world or something like that, and that's the new one. Um, but it's it's kind of interesting. Next is Joe Ely, which is called, it's called Love in the Midst of Mayhem. I apologize for not keeping eye contact while I go over my notes here. <laughs> the Joe Ely has more slower tempo songs. Um, it gets mixed reviews as well, and it's it's not the best reviews on his songwriting. Um, it doesn't do a lot for me at this point. There's one or two songs that I've listened to online that sound like I might like them, maybe three. But I'm not jumping at the bit to get that. Jumping at the bit to get that. Willie Nelson, First Rose of Spring. Now that has some wonderful production. Um, his voice is in fine form, very full and very age worn. It just he sounds great. Uh, slower tempo songs. There's about two or three songs that are more up tempo. Um, but I might pick that up eventually. And of course, Bruce Springsteen's Letter to You, which is with him with the E Street Band, which has been getting rave reviews. I've listened to samples of it, and I like it. Um, it's good. It's strong. Uh, I don't know if I'll pick it up or not, if it really moves me that much, but um, it is pretty solid. It's some good, there's some good songwriting, some good playing, some good, big, sweeping Bruce Springsteen, you know, kick-ass, up-tempo songs, and some pretty finger-picking, and uh, there's a lot going on in the album, and it's, it's, it sounds pretty good. Um, I don't know if I'll get it or not. All right, now let's get on to all the ones I did buy. There are 30 five of them. Uh, many artists did two albums this year, or released two albums this year. Um, wow. So let's start get start with Chris Smither, More From The Levee. This is his second, I think the first one is just called Songs From The Levee, and it's a retrospective of his career uh, with him reinterpreting his songs. So they're new versions of him playing his songs, and that's why it's not farther up on the list. This is number 35. Chris Smither, more from the Levy. I'm not going to go through all the books and everything. Um, it's a good album. It's got great production. It's got him playing his songs, and his songs are great. He's a hell of a songwriter. Um, some nice finger picking. Um, the standout tracks on this, I thought for me, were "Lonely Time" um, and "Confirmation" and "Drive You Home." Yeah. Um, anyway, Chris Smither. Next on the list, Larkin Poe, Kindred Spirits. They do something called um, Tip of the Hat series on video, and they do lots of covers. And uh, they're, the, the series is fantastic. It's just the two of them, not the band, full band. And they decided to put out a, a, a CD of this. I, before it came out, I knew I wasn't going to like everything on it because I didn't like the song choices. Um, and I'll read them to you. They do um, Hellhound on My Trail. I was a little bummed that that's Robert Johnson's song, but they only did like 30 or 40 seconds of that. It's fantastic. They do, a, they do it beautifully. They are really great interpreters of old acoustic blues, and so I was a little bummed at that. Fly Away by Lenny Kravitz. Eh, don't care. Rockin' in the Free World by Neil Young. I was a little bummed at some of the, the changing of the phrasing that Rebecca Lovell, um, the singer and guitar player in this band, did on that, but... It's a nice pick. Um, Devil in Disguise, Elvis Presley, eh, whatever. And The Air Tonight, that's one of my picks for the Phil Collins tune. 
um, that I liked. Uh, Nights in White Satin was pretty good. Who Do You Love by Bo Diddley. It's, it's okay. It's pretty good. Um, and Take What You Want. I don't even know that. Post Malone. Ramblin' Man, The Allman Brothers. That one's one of the stronger tunes. And then Bell Bottom Blues, the Eric Clapton tune is, is really good. Or Derek and the Dominoes. And Crocodile Rock, they do a slowed version of that, the Elton John song. I'm not an Elton John fan. I'm not a Lenny Kravitz fan. I'm not a Post Malone fan. <laughs> so, you know, this is a little bit, you know, they didn't pick the ones that I would have liked them to pick. Um, and there are many that are fantastic that they do. But it's good production. It's a good CD overall. A lot of people will probably like it more than me. Next is John Moreland, LP5. And uh, it's not his strongest outing yet, but it's still solid songwriting and good singing and some much slower acoustic songs, some weird drum beats that I'm not into. Some people might be. Um, my favorite tracks were East October, um, Let Me Be Understood, and um, uh, In Between, In Times Between. Um, so, but overall, it's, it's a decent album. It won't get a lot of spins from me, but I did like it. Drive-By Truckers, The Unraveling. This one is very topical. If you don't like it, like that kind of thing, it's some people would call it preachy. They are pretty liberal Southern rockers. Um, but I do love the Drive-By Truckers. They hold a place in my heart forever. And um, it's, you know, good songwriting, good country, good rock. And uh, I said, there's only two Mike Cooley songs on it. The rest are all Patterson Hood songs. And my favorites, I guess, are Heroin Again, 21st Century USA, and Thoughts and Prayers. You can imagine what that's about. This was released in January of 2020. So we'll hear more from them before this video is over. Margot Price, live album. Um, uh, called Perfectly Imperfect at the Ryman. You know, I love Margot Price no matter what. This falls kind of low on the list, though, because it's just not the best live recording. Um, it's good. There's a lot of covers on it. I do like it. Um, there's some guests. There's Emmylou Harris and Jack White are on it. Sturgill Simpson's on it. Um, favorite tracks are probably Ain't Living Long Like This, Worthless Gold, because I don't think I've heard that before. Hurting on the Bottle. She does a medley into Whiskey River. is pretty good. Um... It's just not the best sounding live recording. I don't know why. The band isn't full enough in, 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 in front of the picture. Sometimes they almost sound like they're out of tune or it's not the best performance. But overall, it's decent. It won't get a lot of plays for me. I do like what she wrote on the, in the album that she says. Something about where um, when she was came to Nashville, well, early on in her career, she was busking for quarters outside the Ryman. And she was working as a waitress at Layla's and she'd be taking out the trash in the back alley and, and see the back doors of the Ryman. Now, 13 years later, bang, she's playing the Ryman with guests like Emmy Lou Harris. So yay for Margot Price. Um, I just have to have anything Margot Price because I love her to death. And I think she's a wonderful songwriter, wonderful person, great performer. Next, Old 97's 12th. Why they put a picture of Roger Starbuck on here? <laughs> I guess because they're from Texas. He's a Dallas Cowboy, and he's number 12, and this is their 12th album. It's it's pretty rock and roll -y album. It's got a couple of, of you know, nothing is going to make me really turn my head and go back to this as far as catchy, which they are known for catchy. Um, it's, only, it's got one Murray Hammond song, Happy Hour, which is pretty good. Turn Off the TV is good, and Confessional Boxing. Um, that one had a line I wanted to refer to, I think, in here. Um, I had a four-leaf clover, but those, but those days are over. Maybe referring to one of their older songs, Four-Leaf Clover, and how their sound has changed. Um, but it's good. It's, it's pretty rock and roll. Bottle Rocket Baby is pretty good. Um, it, it's solid. It's a good, solid rock album. Um, country-esque, but not as country as their older stuff. And look at this. Drive-By Truckers again. The new OK. Um... The new OK is OK. Um, and this is funny because they did, this, they did this album, The Unraveling, in January, and then this comes out, and it has a song called The Unraveling, which the other one does not. And this is very similar. It's topical. It's, they each have nine songs. If, I mean, if they probably, I bet if they knew they were going to do this, they would have made a double album. They were planning on touring after the first one, The Unraveling. So um, it's pretty drive-by trucker Z, you know, it's country and rock and decent songwriting. The songs that stand out to me are um, Sea Island Lonely and um, The Unraveling and The Perilous Night. Um, only one Mike Cooley track on this. The other eight are all Patterson Hood. Uh, it would make a good companion to the first one, but neither of these really, really turned my head for drive-by truckers albums. They're good. 
Next, Toots and the Maytels, got to be tough. This is very different for what he does normally. It's pretty raucous and funky. There's some horns on here. Um, it is good, I like it. It's not my favorite, but I, I love that he got an album in before he passed away this year. Um, I love that, and I love Toots and the Maytels. So, um, got to be tough is good. Just Brutal is, is really good. Warning, Warning is good, and Freedom Train. Those are probably my standout tracks, my favorites on here. Neil Young, uh, An American Treasure his second album of the year. He also put out a 50th anniversary of uh, After the Gold Rush and of course the return to Greendale. And the other thing was called The Time. So, wow. <laughs> um, this is simple and slow. It definitely fits in that period with After the Gold Rush and Harvest when it was supposed to come out. And um, there are a few new songs and then there's some reworked older songs. Um, there's some, a couple that are kind of upbeat and rocking. Those are the ones I like better. I like Homegrown. I like this version of Star of Bethlehem, which I love that album, the album that's on, which is a home, uh, Hawks and Doves, sorry. Um, Florida is just him talking. I don't know what's up with that song. Um, we Don't Smoke It No More is good. Um, so it's, it's good. It's not, you know, going to get a lot of spins from me, but it'll probably grow on me in time. Next, the Rolling Stones, Steel Wheels, live Atlantic City, New Jersey, with guests such as um, Axl Rose with Izzy Stradlin uh, of Guns N' Roses. And then there's also um, uh, Eric Clapton's on this, doing Little Red Rooster, and John Lee Hooker doing Boogie Chillin'. And it's their, you know, the typical thing they've been doing now with two CDs and a DVD of the whole show. Uh, it's very nice. It's a good set. Uh, I definitely like Ronnie Wood playing electric, playing his uh, lead guitar and Start Me Up. I love when he does lead guitar and Start Me Up, which he, he always does, but he just he kicks that song's ass. He does a beautiful job with it. Um, so it's good. That's number, what is that? That's number 26. Now we're up to number 25. Alphabet Land by X, the return of X, the punk rock band from L.A. with Xene, Cervinka, and John Doe. And this is a fun, raucous album. It's a good rock and roll album. Um... I like the more rock and roll songs better than the punk songs. Alphabet Land I like a lot. Water and Wine I like a lot. Um, and Strange Life, those are my three standout tracks from Alphabet Land. But definitely, you know, the, the harmonies between John Doe and Exene Cervinka are still great. It is a good record. Solid. Well worth getting. Dave Alvin comes in from an old guitar at number 24. And this is all covers, um, some nice versions of some great songs. Uh, he does a Chris Smither song on here. He does Bob Dylan. He does Amanda, the old country song, and a bunch of songs I haven't heard, which is just wonderful because to me then, they're not cover songs, right? They're Dave Alvin songs, which isn't really true. But anyway, my uh, standout tracks on here are Albuquerque, Mobile Blue, Mobile Blue, whatever. There's a couple instrumentals on here, which are good. Um, Dynamite Woman and Who's Been Here. Um, so this is well worth picking up. This is a, a good album. Next, Arlo McKinley. This came in my Bloodshot package, and um, I was pretty surprised at how much I liked this. It didn't jump out at me, but I, I went back to it and listened to it a couple more times and really liked the production. Very country, good pedal steel. Nothing too upbeat on here. Most of it's a little slower. It's a medium tempo, but um, very, great, very good songwriting. Die Midwestern is a song I like. Oh, I think there was a line on here I wanted to bring up, too. Um, she's always around Suicidal Saturday Night. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Okay. But that, um, this is a solid album. Well worth it. Puss in Boots. Shannon D turned me on to them on one of her earlier Music of the Year videos. Um, this is called Sister. I bought both of their CDs. It's got Nora Jones in the band. And I like uh, the other album a little better, but I like this one a lot. It's got, um, they do Tom Petty's Angel Dream and Concrete Blonde's Joey. Uh, they do nice jobs on those, but it's kind of Americana, rootsy, um, some very nice and sparse production, and I would say my favorites are probably Lucky. Um, what else did I put on here for, uh, oh, It's a Wonderful Lie, and It's Not Easy, yeah, um, and the Razor song I also like. So, um, but I like the whole album, can't go wrong, solid, solid album. Next, coming in at number 21. William Elliot Whitmore, another one in my Big Bloodshot uh, holiday sale package. Let me get these out of the way before they all fall over all over the place. Um, this is pretty sparse. It's, uh, most of the songs are him and banjo or him and acoustic guitar. And um, he's a good songwriter. He's a good singer. And um, I like it a lot. There's a couple of upbeat songs with the whole band, um, but it's it's pretty it's a pretty good record. Nine songs on it. My favorites are Black Iowa Dirt, Solar Flare, and 
My mind can be cruel to me. What a great title and how true. All right, folks, we're into the top 20. I hope I'm not going too fast. My boy Gerf Morlix, my man Gerf Morlix, who I uh, did a Unsung Heroes on, or I, I don't know if it's out yet, or I'll do one. I think, yeah, I did an Unsung Heroes on him. Uh, Kiss of the Diamondback that he put out um, this year, and it's a really solid effort by him. It's more of the same. It's he, he produces, he plays all the instruments, he writes all the songs. It's his voice. It's uh, songs about love and heartbreak and life struggles. Um, I'd say my favorites on here are probably, um, I got don't remember exactly off the top of my head, uh, Water is Rising, Break Even, and Geniuses. It's got a song called Hard as a Hammer, Sweet as a Kiss. Great title. Great artwork. So, uh, yeah, I highly recommend anything by Gerf Morlix. I think he's fantastic. All right, folks, Web Wilder. Um, this one I also uh, included in my... Um, Web Wilder, Unsung Heroes. It's got um, the first side is mostly covers, and then the second side is mostly originals, and there's some good originals. Um, pretty rock and roll album. Uh, actually, not, sorry, I take that back. Not real rock and roll album, but there's a couple of upbeat songs on there. Not as rock and roll as most of his. There's some beautiful pedal steel, some country songs. My favorites are Hold It On To Myself, Tell Me What's Wrong, Illusion of Love, which he wrote, and buried our love which he wrote as well so he, it's um it's a good album though i do like it okay let's keep going here now we're into oh nathaniel rateliff from that nathaniel rateliff and the night sweats really wonderful sparse spare ethereal kind of production on this um really happy to find this and most of them are slow slower songs but i i like it a lot um it's just very soulful and it's on stacks what do you know my favorites, uh, and it's still all right. Um, boy, I can't remember them all. And it's still all right. Uh, uh, expecting to lose, and you need me. Um, those are some of the more upbeat ones. But the whole song, whole album, is solid. Very, very good. Next, Margot Price. That's how rumors get started. You know, she's going in a different direction. It seems a little bit to me than her first two albums, but I do like it quite a bit. Uh, still, it's still Margot Price. Um, a little more R&B, soul, and rock on here. Um, less, not, not as country as the other ones, but I do like it. My favorites are um, Twinkle Twinkle, and that's, which is pretty rocking and funky. And then uh, Prisoner of the Highway, I'd like a lot, and Gone to Stay. Um, still great songwriting. Still Margot Price. So, yeah, I like her a lot. My One of my top favorite finds of um, new bands of 2020 is Low Cut Connie, and they actually have an album out this year. Low Cut Connie, great rock and roll, um, really strong. He's a piano player, um, he's a great songwriter, good singer, great performer. Um, the, the main guy in the band, the main singer and writer, uh, but really good, good guitar riffs, great bass, great piano, just they move, and they sound like... Even though they're a rock and roll band, they could be popular now. They could have a good living now. Um, standout tracks for me, Look What They Did, Stay As Long As You Like, Tea Time, and um, Charisse. I've bought a couple of their other albums since I discovered them, and I like them better, but this one will grow on me because um, it's a little more produced than the other ones, a little less rough, you know, raw rock and roll, but still plenty of raw rock and roll. A little explicit on the lyrics, one topical song, um, Look what they did. Talk that one of the lines is um, he made half a billion, and, and 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 what did the rest of us get, or something like that, and and talks about the racial injustices, and so it's uh, topical but also rocking. So wonderful album. Jamie Wyatt, Neon Cross. I also discovered her this year and love her. She is, I guess nowadays you'd call her outlaw country. She's on New West Records. Um, very twangy, very country, great pedal steel, great songwriting, and I would say um, mostly slow to medium tempo, um, but some great lines here. Um, first, the songs, uh, standout tracks, Neon Cross, Livin', and uh, Make Something Out of Me, and the line that I love is, uh, if God made the world out of nothing, why can't he make something out of me? Wow, oh, what a great line. She's pretty fantastic. I'm psyched to hear more of her records. This is her latest, 2020, and there are other ones. Next, Bob Dylan, Rough and Rowdy Ways. I know some people will put him farther up on the list. I like this album a lot. Um, it's a great return to form from those later albums like Time Out of Mind and um, 
uh, modern times and love and theft and it's it's kind of raw you know jangly primitive bluesy uh, his voice is in fine form his songwriting is excellent just not my favorite Bob Dylan album but I do like it a lot I love that he has a picture of the Carter family in here the second disc is that the one song murder most foul my favorite tracks on this one are um, uh, Goodbye Jimmy Reed, I Contain Multitudes, and False Prophet. Um, so, very happy to have a new Bob Dylan album. Next, The Dirty Knobs, Mike Campbell of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers' new album. And I gotta say, it is really rocking. Um, it sounds like a guy who's worked with Tom Petty for 40 years, but it's really, it's really rocking. Um, he, he sometimes sounds like Tom Petty. It's called Reckless Abandon, and... Um, it's there's some bluesy stuff, some rock and roll, some country, some boogie, some you know it's it's just good. Um, some of the songwriting leaves a little to be desired, but mostly it's pretty strong. My favorite tracks: Pistol Pack and Mama, which features Chris Stapleton. Fuck that guy is is pretty good. Uh, and uh, Anna Lee and Ah Honey and Loaded Gun are my other favorites, really though. Um, great album, highly recommend it. Last year, Tanya Tucker made my top 10 list, or top 9 list. Now she is number 12 with a brand new live album, Live at the Troubadour, Small Club. It has that small club feel. And it is a wonderful, wonderful record with lots of um, tra some tracks from that last album, While I'm Living, as well as um, lots of her hits. And she's in fine form. My only complaint is there's this young, flashy guitar player. I think she brags at one point when she introduces him about his age, like really young, like 15 or younger or something. And, he, and when she introduces him, he does this rip roar and shredding, totally out of place solo on whatever song it was. But other than that, it is fantastic. I'd say um, standout tracks for me are Blood Red and Going Down, um, The Wheels of Laredo, Mustang Ridge, everything from that last album. Um, uh, and, uh, boy, the whole thing is good. Oh, Texas, When I Die, one of my favorite Tanya Tucker songs. Great album. Great feel. Live feel. Steve Earle, we're getting to the top ten. Ghosts of West Virginia, themed album about the coal industry in West Virginia. Really solid. Um, really, really like this album a lot. Could have been higher up easily, as you know, with any of these things, these these albums can shift and move. And this is my, these are my favorites and the ones I bought. Yours, the list may be very different, of course. But and there's going to be plenty that I leave out that you would say, "What? How do you leave those out?" But this is what I like, and this is what I got, and uh, I'm, I'd love to hear what you like and what you put up here. Ghost of West Virginia, very solid country bluegrassy album much like his album The Mountain, which was straight bluegrass, the whole thing. This is not. This has some songs that sound pretty bluegrassy. A great um, duet with a woman named um, oh, Eleanor Whitnor, If I Could See Your Face Again. That's a real pretty standout track. I might check her out. Um, and then other standout tracks, Union God and Country, Black Lung, and Fastest Man Alive, which is kind of a rockabilly groove. Um, very you know good themed album without being preachy without ramming it down your throat there's maybe one or two tracks that are a little preachy about how he feels about the coal industry in west virginia but he's speaking up for the people like he does great album all right folks we're in the top 10. i was very fortunate to find that scott h byram has a new album fever dreams i was real happy when i did my bloodshot sale by that um he had a new album out and i got it um it's more of the same, more of Scott H. Byram, you know, country, blues, rockin', distorted guitar sometimes. He's a one-man band, distorted vocals, some themes of love and loss and heartache, some angry songs. Uh, my favorite are Can't Stay Long. Um, uh, boy, I can't remember them all. Oh, Hallelujah, which has Jonas Wilson. I don't know who that is, but... Um, and single again. Those are my favorites. There's some Waylon sounding, Waylon Jennings stomping country sounds. Just a great album. Next, Elizabeth Cook, another new find for me this year. I bought a couple of her records. This is Aftermath. I think I like the other one a little better, but this is really solid. Um, it's got some almost pop sounding production, but it just works. And it's she's kind of outlaw country, I guess you'd call her. And um, yeah, Perfect Girls of Pop is an interesting tune. My favorite ones off this, there's a lot of them, but um, St uh, Stanley by God Terry, 
uh, Mary, the Submissing Years, and Half Hanged Mary. Those are probably my favorites. Mary's the Submissing Years is a takeoff on John Prime's The Missing Years, and she does it beautifully. Um, it's a really she changes the whole story, and she keeps some of the melody and some of it's talking blues, uh, and she does a couple little little pokes of tribute to uh, to, to John Prime's one. Um, really great. I love her twangy voice. This has some real thick, big production um, though. Great album. Next, Lucinda Williams coming back into the fold, thankfully. She, Good Souls, Better Angels, really excited about this. Best thing I think she's done in a long time. So I like it so much it comes in at number eight. Um, really raunchy, bluesy, chunky, crunchy guitars, great solos, um, solid songs all the way through. Man Without a Soul is, you know, you won't have to guess who it's about if you listen to it. And, um, it's getting some attention. Uh, my favorites on this one are, are probably um, Pray the Devil Back to Hell, Shadows and Doubt, and Big Rotator, but the whole thing is great. Down Past the Bottom is also good. Solid Lucinda Williams album. Really happy she did this. Coming in at number seven, Sturgill Simpson, Cutting Grass. 20 tunes, 19 of which he wrote, um, and they're all songs that he has already done that are his older songs. Uh, but they're done bluegrass style for the most part. The Butcher Shop Sessions, they sound like classic bluegrass songs. This is fantastic. And he's got Sierra Hall on mandolin and, and guitar. And there's a, you can see her there in the picture right there. Um, just love Sierra Hall. She's fantastic. Um, and the songs just, you know, they touch on love, life and love and loss and, and, and gospel and um, alcohol and railroads and coal and <laughs> everything country. Very solid bluegrass album. At first, I wasn't sure I liked his voice doing this material, but as I kept going into it, I really loved it. And um, Tim O'Brien is somebody that other people have probably heard the name. Um, so anyway, it's very solid. Next, big surprise, maybe The Pretenders, Hate for Sale, number six. Really excited about this album. First Pretenders album I really have ever really gotten into, listened to. Um, it is rock and solid. There's one reggae track. There's a couple of softer, slower tunes. Mostly it's rock and roll. Um, some beautiful, beautiful melodies and great singing by Chrissy Hines. Some wonderful bass playing on a couple tracks. I'd say, oh, standout track, sorry, for Sturgill Simpson for me. Um, uh, our life ain't fair and the world is mean. A little light and sitting here without you and voices. A picture's worth a thousand words and word ain't worth a dime is a great line from that. All right, sorry. Back to Pretenders. Um, yeah, really love this album. The buzz, soaring vocals and melody, great bass line. You can't hurt a fool. Crying in public. Um, feminist, here's a line from it. Feminists claim they were all, that we're all the same, but I don't know a man who's felt the same shame. What a great, great line. Wonderful writing, wonderful solid band. I know Pretenders fans have seen the lineup change over the years. I don't know anything about that at this point, but um, this might be my entry into Pretenders. Loved it. Coming in at number five, the return of ACDC, Power Up, a more fun rock and roll album haven't heard in a long time. It is great. They are back in form. Um, Brian Johnson singing is sounding fantastic, surprisingly enough. Stevie Young is replacing Malcolm Young. He is um, Angus's nephew, and all the songs are written by Malcolm and Angus, uh, so obviously before Malcolm passed away. Um, Through the Mists of Time is uh, probably my favorite one on there. Really neat chord changes at the very end of each verse going into the choruses. But I like every song on here. I picked for my pick out ones, Kick You When You're Down and Shot in the Dark. But I gotta say, uh, there isn't a bad song on the record. It's just chock full of ACDC riffs and, and hard guitars and big backing vocals from the rest of the band. And it's, it's wonderful. Highly recommend it. Next, number four, Corb Lund, Agricultural, tra Agricultural Tragic. Great Waylon Jennings type stomping, four on the floor country songs. Some great pedal steel. I did an Unsung Heroes video about him. He does a lot of um, songs about horses, songs about agriculture, obviously. And um, this is no different. Really great country, mostly all, almost all upbeat. He does um, I Think You Ought to Try Whiskey with someone named Jada Dreyer, a nice funny duet, which is great. He always has something on there that's a little funny. 
Um, but most of them are just great songs. Dance With Your Spurs On, Old Men, I Think You Ought to Try Whiskey, and Rain and Horses are my picks off of this. But I, I like every song on the record, as I usually do with Cord Lund. Can't go wrong. Next, I can't believe it. Willie Nile came, up, came out with a brand new album this year, and I also did an Unsung Heroes video on him. This is called New York at Night. It's his second or third CD with New York in the title. He's a big New York guy. Um, I've seen pictures online of, of him being hugged by Bruce Springsteen. Um, been probably compared to Dylan. This is just rocking. I mean, it is great songwriting. It's typically what you'd expect from Willie Nile if you know him at all. And it's just wonderful. My favorite tracks, New York is rocking, The Fool Who Drank the Ocean, Downtown Girl. Um, but everything on this, New York at Night, everything on this is top-notch stellar. Getting to the end here, number two, Ray Wiley Hubbard, another person I did a unsung hero, an Unsung Heroes on. This is called co-starring because it has a whole lot of guests on it, like Chris Robinson, Ringo Starr, Joe Walsh, Elizabeth Cook, who I mentioned earlier, uh, Larkin Poe, lots of great people on this. Um, just love it. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. It's more Ray Wiley Hubbard, some crunchy rock and blues tracks, and some pretty songwriting, some finger-picking blues, some name-dropping, which he does well, as Willie Nile does well. Favorite tracks are Hummingbird, uh, Missing Mississippi John Hurt, and um, probably uh, um, Drink uh, Drink Till I See Double. That's a duet with Elizabeth Cook. But, and he does one song of his that he, he's done before, The Messenger. But everything on here is fantastic. Can't recommend it enough, start to finish. And last, number one, Larkin Poe, Self-Made Man. I am just thrilled with this album for many reasons. Uh, I've been a fan now for a couple or few years. I like everything pretty much that I've heard of them for the most part. Um, but this, they really seem to be coming into their own. Um, Rebecca's songwriting has really taken a, a shift upwards in this in this album um before some of their stuff sounded more like jams you know and this sounds like songs these sound like songs and there isn't a bad song on here i love every one of them um, my favorites i think i put in another video are tears of blue and gold easy street and ex-con their version of reverend gary davis's uh, god moves on the water is fantastic back down south is another favorite um i love every song on this album I, it, I, it is just wonderful. Uh, people might call it blues rock. I think that doesn't pay it enough uh, good homage. <laughs> good homage. I think it's better than just your typical blues rock, but um, it is a fantastic album, and I love the pedals. I love the, the lap steel that Megan plays and the harmonies that they both sing. The production for doing it alone in their home, um, I think, is pretty fantastic, and that is my number one pick um for the year so it's been a hell of a year for music very happy with all these great new releases and reissues that i did a video on also um please subscribe please like and please comment i'd love to hear what what i missed in your my, opinion and uh what should be omitted in your opinion or um just what you liked um remember this is you know these are all subjective and top 10 or top 20 or top 30 or top 40